Hello, welcome once again. Um, trying to settle some confusion again. When you refer to something as a crank and no start and a no crank, no start, there is a difference. So no crank, no start means I have nothing working. I believe that the starter mode is not even engaged, not working. A crank and no start means the starter is engaged, but there's a problem with the fuel or there's a problem with ignition timing or a, a spark system um, is not functioning properly. That's the difference. But no matter what the terminology that you use, let's say we, ha we know we have a no start. Let's just plain call it in simple English a no start, okay? I have the, the instrument cluster in front of me, which is in front of the dashboard. The gauge tells me I'm at 12.6 volts in the battery. So I use that right away as a voltmeter for my purposes. Now, he Let's say, as I've been asked a couple of times, how do I know the ignition switch is good? How do I know that, and uh, how do you know that the park neutral position switch is good? Okay, like I explained in recent videos, you find a common point. Remember, these places are hard to, to, to access. Many times you have to take many things apart, which is an hourly labor rate, only to get to that part and say, well, this part was good to begin with. Okay, that's part of troubleshooting. Yes, it is. However, we can go around that. We can bypass that. Okay, find a common wire or a common component. So we look over here. We always start from the beginning. Okay, so the fuse block over here. This is the original schematic from the dealership dealer manuals this is not a schematic from mitchell or data or things like that this is the original one so as we read it it's a little more technical a little more advanced so as we come over here to the fuse will be hot at all times that means this will always have 12 volts okay regardless if the key is turned or not turned it goes to a 20 amp fuse which is a low rated fuse we come out of a connector c1 which has a terminal of A2. We go through an orange wire with a has a gauge of 0.8. We're not going to worry about the gauge rating of these wires. We're just going to go through this. Here's the main point, the ignition switch. We know we have multi-functions for the ignition switch. <clears throat> now, we're not concerned with accessories or lock or off. We're concerned with two positions right now, start and run. In the run position, we are concerned with getting fuel pressure. But we're not dealing with that right now. Right now we're dealing, we can't even hear the starter being engaged. So we're dealing with this position right here of the start position. Is this switch good? Well, in order to get access of this, it's a, you have to take a lot of things apart, obviously, in the, to the lock cylinder, the steering wheel. We don't want to do that. Find a common point, an input and output. The input is here, <clears throat> right here is the input. The output is a yellow wire going to the fuse. <clears throat> so where is our point of, of access going to be? If you said this fuse, you're correct. Let me use this fuse to measure 12 volts. So I'm gonna go here or here, either side of the fuse. And I want to measure 12 volts. What will that tell me? When I put this in the start position and I get 12 volts, that tells me right away this multi-purpose switch is in the start position. Otherwise, how can I have 12 volts? Okay? So I'm going to go find this fuse, <clears throat> crank fuse, as it's called, a 10 amp fuse. How do I know? It brings me now to a park neutral position switch. Uh, abbreviate as PNP. How do I know that this switch is working? I have to be either in park or neutral to start the car. If I am reverse, if I am in manual, one, two, three, it will not let me start the car. How do I know that this is working? Again, find the common point. We came from here to here to here. Where is a point that I can determine if this is good? Let's follow the, the, the path. A purple and white striped wire goes to the relay. So you know what? I can go to the relay. This is referred to as the load side. This is referred to as the control side. So I can go over here 
to this terminal over here and measure 12 volts. If I measure 12 volts with the switch either in park or neutral, I know the park and neutral switch is good. And I know the ignition switch for sure is good because we just proved it before by what? By measuring the fuse. And the fuse is an easy place to get to because it's right under the hood. Okay? This is a little tricky to get to. So what did we do? We found where is the next connection to it? The next connection to it is the relay. And the relay is also in the fuse panel itself. So two easy access points. We, we knocked out this one. We knocked out this one. Now, for this one, here's, here's the thing. After the relay is engaged and activated, I've been I did so many videos about this. If you want to look up the video, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto or Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph, the channels, we have to go to a solenoid. We have to get 12 volt or we have to get current going to the solenoid to activate the starter motor. This is a symbol for starter motor. When you see an M, signifies a motor. In this case, the solenoid will activate, obviously, the starter motor. So we have two windings over here, a hold-in coil and, as, we, as you see over here, a pull-in coil. Two coils. Now, here's the problem. We have these wires that come from the battery. There are thick wires. The th one of the thick wires is the one obviously giving all that high current to the starter motor. When the starter motor engages, the pinion gear engages the flywheel and the crankshaft. So that's that thick wire. We have another thick wire. Another thick wire is the one that's, this is the symbol of the alternator. And the alternator, we have another thick wire coming back to the battery, okay? Going through a fusible link. So that's two thick wires. We also have another thick wire. We have something called the battery fuse, 175 amps. Why do we need that much? Here's the battery positive. Current flows through one thick wire, which is for the starter, which can crank up to 300, 400 amps, sometimes even more than that even. So that's why we need a thick wire. Again, an alternator also is a thick wire. Back to the battery. Here's another thick wire. This thick wire over here goes through the battery fuse, 175 amps. And where does that go to? That goes to the relay. Question, why do we need 175 amps if it's going just to the relay? This fuse is only 40 amps. What happened to 135 amps, the difference between here? Well, if you notice, there's also power distribution schematic. There's also, also another wire, a red wire. Okay, a red wire here going to the relay. A red wire going to all the power distribution, all the other systems, the fuse, the ignition systems, the uh, computer modules, the fuel injectors, the fuel pump. All this is going through those circuits that you don't see over here. This is the reason that we need this high-rated fuse. If this is bad, obviously, the relay will not be triggered. Okay? So, if this is bad, nothing will work. If this is bad, the 40 amps, the 40 amps, the starter will not work from, because of the relay. Now, what's the test that's being done? Most people will take this. Here's the starter motor. The battery's not drawn here, okay? Concentrate on this. this we, we know, we just proved, we just proved ignition switch works. We just proved this fuse works. We just proved that park neutral uh, safety switch uh, works. <clears throat> now, what about taking a battery, our battery that's in our car, and putting that cable, two cables, one to the solenoid, which is over here, and the other side to ground, and making and forcing this starter motor to be activated, to engage, <clears throat> okay? Remember, we're not turning on the car. We're just using the battery as a voltage source right now, a power source, to, make sh to see if this uh, starter motor is working. We take the positive over here. We take the negative of the battery over here. So what is going to happen? All that's going to happen is the pinion gear is going to be engaged and come out. That doesn't that doesn't prove to me that this starter motor is excuse me is capable 
of engaging a load of a V8 or a V6 when that load is applied to the starter motor. All it tells me, the pinion gear goes out or is engaged. That doesn't tell me that the, few, the, that the whole starter motor can engage or can handle a load of a V8, a V6, whatever, a four-cylinder engine. Not in my opinion. It's like taking the starter motor, <coughs> excuse me, like taking the starter motor, going to AutoZone, having them test it for you, or taking the battery from them, having it test for you, which is how, which is another question, how can you take the starter motor and the battery to AutoZone if they don't work in the first place? So, now, anyway, however you got there, so they're going to tell you the starter motor is good, but that's not applying it with an engine. That's just giving 12 volts, seeing the, the gear pinion being engaged, activated, good. That doesn't mean under a full load of an engine, it can handle it. That's not, that's uh, against my opinion. That's why it's not a good test. If I put 12 volts here to this in the car, remember, I'm not activating any fuel, <clears throat> no ignition to the, to the engine to turn on the engine. All I'm doing is I'm just taking 12 volts to this, seeing if this is, in, if this is activated <clears throat> not a good enough proof for me <clears throat> so think about that in the future you, you could take you can take the you can take this starter motor to AutoZone. they'll test it for you only to put it back in the car and say you know what it doesn't work why doesn't it work well because that wasn't that didn't have a load on it so therefore take this into into consideration the true test of anything just like if you want to see if there's spark coming out of a spark plug wire onto a spark plug you might take it out of the cylinder and might have spark that doesn't mean with the load condition on it it will work that's why the best thing is to leave everything connected in <clears throat> as is this starter motor i want to see if this starter motor is working let the let let the load or the 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 um the engine whatever needs to try to be a load on it and then let's see if this can handle that load because that's the real the real situation that's gonna it's gonna be in not on a bench in auto zone that's not the real situation it's gonna be in <clears throat> so that's my recommendation so again after 12 minutes of this video after wasting time probably right Here's over here. I want to prove the ignition switch. I proved it by going to the fuse. I want to prove this is good. How did I prove that? I came to this relay. I want to prove that this starter motor is good, right? How would I do that? Measure the 12 volts. Put a clamp meter over here. Put a clamp meter and see if that clamp meter is what? It's pulling current. If you're pulling 300, 300, 400 amps, like if you've seen the video that I do on the channel, Joe, the Chosky Mass Photo, if I'm pulling 300, 400 amps of current through this thick wire, I put a clamp meter right here around this, that means I don't have, I don't have a no crank, no start problem. I have a crank and no start. I have a fuel problem. I have ignition uh, problem. Maybe a, 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 a ignition belt, a timing belt, a, a timing chain is off. Something like that might be off. We're addressing the wrong part of it then. The key is, if you have a clamp meter with that and watch the videos that I made, you can see these things using a clamp meter, how much I am pulling. If I'm pulling 300, 400 amps, he must be activated. He must be working. Otherwise, how, where would I get all that current being pulled from except by him? engaging the engine another thing is look at this look at the fan the clutch fan if that clutch fan is turning that means you know what that means the water pump is turning the shaft is turning the the uh, uh, cl clutch fan that means that engine is trying to turn over so it's not a starter problem that's one way of looking at it. Anyway, if this was helpful, okay, and I, there's so much confusion when it comes to these things to start a motor. I know I understand that. 
But like I said, look at the videos that I made, how to use a clamp meter, how to use a clamp meter to measure an alternator. An alternator is a computer controlled device. You just can't say alternator is bad and change an alternator. The computer controls the output of it, the current and the voltage. This is, we have to test things different nowadays than we did 20 years ago, 25 years ago. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please go to the channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. Thanks.